All right. Welcome, everyone, to Plant-Based Kidney Health. As always, I'm Dr. Sean Hashmi. My partner is Michelle Crossmer. So excited to see everybody back. So, Michelle, today's question is, is can you please explain for us this concept of potential renal acid load from food? What is it? What does it mean? And why should we care? Of course. So the potential renal acid load, oftentimes you might hear called PRAL or P-R-A-L. Um, what it is, is it's basically the amount of acid that is produced um, in the body after metabolize, digesting and then metabolizing certain um, foods. This is not to be confused with how acidic a food is you know, prior to consuming it. And that's a lot of times where it can get confusing. So things like Um, citrus fruits, you know, lemons, limes, oranges, things like tomatoes, those are acidic foods, you know, before you consume them. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the um, potential for food to create more or less acid or more or less alkaline or alkalinity um, after digesting and then metabolizing that food. So if you think, I guess, think of this along, there's a spectrum of prowl or potential renal acid load. And so there are foods that are going to be um, more positive, foods that are more neutral, and then foods that are more negative. And according to that, you have higher, you know, neutral and then lower potential renal acid load. Um, We like to think of things as like the total or the net potential renal acid load. So each food can be more acid forming or more alkaline forming. But you also want to think of your typical day and is your typical day or the typical meal you're consuming um, have a what is its net potential renal acid load. So how do we even calculate it? So not that you guys need to be calculating it, but just to kind of explain, there's five nutrients that are used to determine the potential renal acid load of a food. So it's protein, phosphorus, calcium, magnesium, and potassium. So if you were to plug in, you know, your food and the nutrition information for that into the PRAL calculator or equation, that's really those five nutrients that are being looked at. And then in general, foods that are higher in protein and phosphorus have a higher potential renal acid load or they are more acid forming and foods that are lower in protein and phosphorus and higher in calcium, magnesium, and potassium have a lower or more negative potential renal acid load. Uh, so to give some examples of that, so your um, when we think of like our meats, poultry, seafood, those are higher in protein, higher in phosphorus, lower in general in calcium, magnesium, and potassium. So they have a higher potential renal acid load. Um, some foods are more, they're moderately high or moderately positive. And so that's usually where our eggs, dairy, and whole grains fall in. Foods that are more neutral are typically fats and oils. And then foods that are lower or negative are foods that are going to be lower in protein, lower in phosphorus, and then higher in calcium, magnesium, and potassium. And that's where um, legumes fall, but especially fruits and vegetables as being very alkaline producing or negative potential renal acid load. Um, why do we even care about this? And like, how, do, how does this fit into kind of practical information is that the kidneys are responsible for, um, you know, getting rid of excess acid in the body. And so if someone has kidney disease, they have declined kidney function, then that acid can start to build up and contribute to something called acidosis. And one of, you know, of course there can be symptoms and side effects of acidosis, things like fatigue and headache. But the other thing is that acidosis is also linked with faster progression of kidney disease. And so we really want to overall be looking at the diet and having it be, um, you know, consider those foods that are more positive or higher potential renal acid load, and then foods that are negative or lower potential renal acid load, because it matters to preventing metabolic acidosis as well as not really, you know, making the kidneys work so hard to get rid of that excess acid. So overall, again, if we're thinking of everything on the spectrum, if we are increasing our intake of fruits and veggies and we are limiting or lowering the intake of, you know, especially those highest acid forming foods like the, the meat and the poultry, um, and then we are balancing our meals with maybe some of those moderate or lower, potential renal acid load foods, then we can help protect the kidneys and, you know, ideally, hopefully prevent or help to treat acidosis in the body. And to give an example of this, if someone were to have, let's say they have a meal and they're eating rice, 
with chicken, you know, six ounces of chicken and they put cheese on top and they're having this bowl and they eat it with some tortilla chips or something. You have very high and moderately high, um, you know, all positive potential renal acid load foods in that meal. So overall, the net potential renal acid load is positive. It's more acid for me. Whereas you have that, you know, meal and you tweak it and you do your, let's say your rice and you do it with a bunch of vegetables and then you have some legumes instead of the chicken, or you simply do a smaller portion of that chicken, then you can make the overall net potential renal acid load of that meal um, be lower or ideally be negative. And so that's where, again, fruits, veggies um, are so, so important. And then the portion or swapping some of those animal proteins for the plant proteins, you know, the whole food plant proteins can help with making that potential renal acid load lower. Um, if you guys have questions beyond this, I, you know, try to, it can be a very confusing topic. And again, the prowl or potential renal acid load is just one part of diet and nutrition therapy that we look at, but, um, it's something that's really important. And again, not that you necessarily need to be tracking it. It's kind of thinking overall of that spectrum of food and what do your meals look like and what does your day-to-day look like to try to get that to be a lower potential renal acid load. So drop your questions in the comment and we will see you guys next time.